Hello, my name is Yad Rajabi, and today I'm going to show you how to add repeating data to a PowerPoint deck by leveraging the OpenXML SDK. So let's imagine we work for a company called AdventureWorks. This company specializes in all things related to bicycles, so bicycles themselves, bicycle parts, accessories, and even clothing. Like many other companies, this company stores all of its products within a database. So now let's imagine the sales and marketing team asks us to create a PowerPoint deck representing the entire product catalog within the database. How do you do that? PowerPoint doesn't allow you to connect to a database, so how are you supposed to accomplish this task? Well, I'm going to show you how to do this using the OpenXML SDK. So the first step of creating any Office document solution, including this one, is creating the right template to make the coding much easier. So let me show you what I mean. So right here I've created a template. The template cr contains three slides. The first slide is just a title slide. doesn't mean much else than that. The second slide is what I'm calling the category section slide and what template. And what this is going to mean is my products are going to be categorized with categories. So a category could be clothing, could be bikes, could be accessories, etc. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all my products from my database and order them by category. So anytime I encounter a new category, I'm going to add the section slide in order to divide up my deck into appropriate sections based on categories. The next slide here is what I'm going to call the table slide template. And what this is going to do is it contains a table in here that's going to contain all my products. Now I have to be careful because I can't store all the I can't show all the products within one slide. So I need to keep track of the the row heights so that if the row height exceeds a certain limit or actually the total table height exceeds a certain limit, I need to overflow the table into a new slide. So I'm going to have many of these slides representing all of the products within my database. All right. So now that we've seen the template Let's go take a look at what the code looks like. So the first thing you'll notice here is under references we have document format.openxml. This is the actual reference to the OpenXML SDK. Alright, so the next thing we need to do is include the proper namespaces here. So the first namespace you'll notice is called dot packaging. This allows us to open up the PowerPoint deck and get access to all the parts. The presentation allows us to access the presentation specific XML elements and the drawing namespace allows us to access the drawing specific XML elements. Alright, so now what we do is we're going to take the template document and output it to an output document and then we're going to open up that output document and to do that you just need one line here and it's called presentation document open give it the output file name and what we're going to do then is once we have the PowerPoint deck open we need to access the two slide template parts so to do this, we need to get the main presentation part, which has access to all the different slide parts. Once we have the main presentation part, we can go grab the, the second slide and the third slide. The, section, the second slide was the section slide part template, and the third slide was the table slide template. Remember, we're going to use these because we're going to clone them as we encounter more and more products. Next step is to go and connect to the database and query the database. In this case, I'm going to use link to SQL and connect to my product database and grab all the products and sort them by the actual category name itself. Alright, now that I have that, let's go through each of the products that we find within our query. We're going to pull in the necessary information from the database, like the category, the subcategory, the model, the price of the, the product itself. And now we need to do something special. So if we encounter a product that has a new category that we haven't encountered yet, remember, we're sorting the, the products by category. So if we encounter a new category, we're going to have to add a new section part. Well, to do that, it's kind of easy. You just go grab the template slide that we had for the section slide part, and we're going to clone that slide to create a new section part. And then we're going to change the placeholder text from section title to the actual category name. All right. The next step here is once we've created a category and we've encountered a product and it's the first product of the category or 
we've encountered a product that doesn't fit in the current slide. Remember, there's this only certain limit of products that can fit within a table. Then we're going to need to go and clone the actual table slide part. Again, we're going to do the same exact thing, but this time with the table slide part. Change the placeholder text of the section to the category name. And we're going to keep track of the total height. So that way, if we add too many rows to the table, we can make sure we can overflow to a new table slide part. OK, so once we have those slide parts all set in place, the next thing we need to do is we need to go grab the image from the database and add it to the slide. To do that, we're going to add an image part to the slide. And this, here it is, add image part. And then we're going to feed the data of the image part from the database itself. And that's all this, what this line is doing right here. All right. The next step is to calculate the dimensions of the image in terms of EMUs. And the reason we need to do this is because the table row height needs to be specified in EMU units. Well, here's the functionality to do this. Grab the, total, grab the height and add it to the total height. If the total height of the table so far exceeds a certain limit, we're going to say that we're going to need to overflow the, the table, which means we need to create a new table slide part. All right. So let's go ahead and once we have all this data, let's go ahead and add the row to the table. So let's go and find it. And this is how you find it. Slide.descendants of type table. Get the first table there. There's only one table. Add a new row. Create a new row. And then we're going to we're going to we're going to specify the height of the row based on the height in EMUs that we found before, and then we're going to create five cells. The first cell is going to contain the image, the next four cells are going to contain the text, and then we're going to append the row to the table, and do this for every table, uh, for every product. And once we have that, we're going to go and delete the two template slides. So let me show you real quick here about how to create a drawing cell and how to create a text cell. So to show you that, here is the two functionalities. The create text cell, which is going to go ahead and create a specific text cell and give it the specific text. And to create an image cell or drawing cell, you just have to create a cell here with a blip that has a reference to the specific image part that you've just added. And just like that, we've went ahead and created it. So let's go ahead and run this document. And now if we go to the output folder, you'll see that we have an output file. Let's go ahead and open that file out. And what you'll see is we'll see 105 slides created. And here's accessories. Here's the first category. And here are all the accessories that we have. And if you keep going down, you'll notice that you know we have bikes. And before we got into bikes, from accessories to bikes, we have a section breaker here called bikes. And just like that, and you can see that it was very, very quick to actually go and run the code. Just like that, we've just created a product catalog within PowerPoint. And this is a really cool solution because it makes PowerPoint more of a reporting application at this point by leveraging the OpenXML SDK. Thank you.